variables and algebraic expressions, lesson 18e, links to the previous videos for lesson 18, 18a, b, c, and d, are in this description. You can just click on them. There's other helpful ones in there too. A variable is a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount. Back in first grade, you'd see a blank line. Well, now in algebra, we're going to use a variable, a letter of the alphabet. So 2 plus n equals 5. Well, the n must be a 3 to make this true, right? An algebraic expression is a group of numbers, operation signs, and variables. There's no equal sign. So this is an algebraic equation because there's an equal sign. An expression doesn't have an equal sign. And we can write algebraic expressions by converting words in a problem into symbols. An x and y are commonly used variables, but we can use any letter to represent the unknown amount. If Bob had x cats and adopted five dogs, he now has eight pets. We can find the number of cats by saying, well, he had adopted five dogs and now has eight. So in order for this to be true, x must equal three. And we could have used c for cats to represent cats. And a lot of times in algebra, you can do that. You can use the letter for that thing and it'll help you remember what you're looking for. And don't use x as a multiplication sign anymore. We're going to use a dot or parentheses. That x for multiplication is for little kids, because if you have a variable x, you'll get it confused with the multiplication sign. All right, now that we're in algebra, you have to use a dot or parentheses to mean multiply. All right? Or you can even put it next to each other. Like in this example, we have five times a number, in words, in symbols, it would be 5x. That's actually called a coefficient. That 5, the number in front of the variable, is called a coefficient. 10 more than a number, well, the number would be x, and 10 more than it would be 10 plus x. 3 less than a number would be x minus 3. The number would be x, and 3 less than it would be x minus 3. See? And if you have to read it a couple times to figure out what the heck they're talking about, well, that's no big deal. We all have to do that every once in a while. One-fourth of a number, well, we learned before with fractions that we can find the fourth of a number by doing one-fourth times that number. If it's increased by six, it's a plus six. The product of a number in four, well, we also know that putting the coefficient next to the variable like this means we're going to multiply four times x, whatever x is. The quotient of a number and 2, well, that means division. And we could say x divided by 2, but in algebra it's a lot easier to write it as a fraction because fractions are little division problems, aren't they? This just means x divided by 2. Now if you notice on this one it says the quotient of 6, so the 6 is the numerator. This one says the quotient of some number, of a number, so the x is the numerator. See that? A number times itself or a number squared would be x squared. It's x times x. The product of x and 5, so that would be 5x, added to, so we have a plus sign, the sum, that means we're going to add 3 and x. See? And we can separate this with parentheses. Now I'm going to have a link to my intro algebra word problems videos 1a and 1b that talks about clue words and deciphering how to make these into expressions or equations. And I also have a video called Clue Words and Problems that will help you. And it says stuff like product is multiplication, quotient is division, and how to figure out when you've got a subtraction, division, you know, multiplication problem, or how to write it like this, okay? Algebraic expressions always contain variables. And the terms of an algebraic expression are separated by a plus or minus sign. We're going to get to a point in this playlist where it's going to say combine like terms or simplify. You need to know what a term is. A term is in an algebraic expression and it's separated only by a plus or minus. Not division or multiplication, only by plus or minus signs. So this is a term. And this is a term. It's separated by a plus sign. There's two terms. We have a minus sign, a plus sign, and a plus sign. And even though this means division and the 3x means multiplication, we have one term, two terms, three terms, four terms. See that? They are only separated by a plus or a minus sign. 
And when the value of the variable changes, the value of the entire expression changes. If x is equal to 2, then 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5 is 9. If x is equal to 5, then we have 2 times 5, that's 10, plus 5, that's 15. All these equations are the same. We're just changing the amount of the variable, and it's changing the answer. See that? If x is 10, we have 2 times 10, plus 5, that's 25. If x is a negative 3, we have 2 times negative 3, which gives us a negative 6. Now we're adding a negative 6 and a positive 5. So we find the difference. It's 1 between 6 and 5. And it takes the sign of the one that's farthest from 0, the negative 6s. So it's a negative. See? We did that before, just recently. We can make a table of values showing how the value of the expression changes. So here we've got this expression, 3x plus 2. And if x means a negative 1, well, that means we have 3 times negative 1. That's a negative 3, isn't it? When we add a 2 to it, we're going to have a negative 1. If x is a 0, well, then we have 3 times 0, which is 0 plus 2. That's a 2. If x is a 1, well, then it's going to equal 5. If x is a 2, then we've got 6 plus 2. It's going to equal 8. And we can see the values for x and substitute each value into the expression. See how it changes? So a table of values, you're going to have some negatives and a 0 and some positives. And it doesn't have to be one after the other. I could have used negative 2, 0, negative 4, negative, you know, I, whatever. It's just whatever is on this side for the value of x gets substituted in, see? They're usually in order in size, but they don't have to be one right after the other. You don't have to have 1, 2, 3, 4. It could be 2, 5, 9, you know? They're in size order, but not necessarily one right after the other, okay? All right, we can make a table of values for two variables. You can make it for more, too. But for two variables, x and y, we can show how the values of the expression changes. So if our, our expression is 2x plus y, if x is a negative 1 and y is a 2, then the whole thing's going to equal a 0, because we have 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2, plus 2 is a 0. Made a 0 pair. If x is a 0 and y is a 3, well, then we have 2 times 0 is 0, plus 3, that's a 3. If x is a 1 and y is a 4, then we have 2 times 1 is 2, plus 4, that makes it a 6. So it's the exact same uh, expression, but by plugging in different values for x and y, we're changing what it equals. See that? We can actually plot these on a graph, and I'll show you how to do that in the future too, all right? on a coordinate plane. Now, sometimes we can only simplify an algebraic expression when we don't know the value of the variables. So there won't always be an equal, all right? Sometimes there will if you know what the variables stand for. When we do know the value of the variables, we can evaluate the expression. It's called evaluating the expression. That means finding what the equal is, all right? If you're simplifying 2x plus 6x plus 3, well, simplifying means combining the like terms. If we have two cats plus six cats, then we have eight cats plus three. See? We can't go any further than this because we don't know what the x really stands for. See? But if we want to evaluate the expression, we know x equals two. So in the same one, two x plus six x plus three, we get two times two, which is four plus 6 times 2, which is 12, plus 3. Now we have a 19. So see how simplifying just kind of condenses it, but we don't really get an equal? And evaluating, we do get an equal. See that? You can think evaluate E equal. See? Simplify means just making it simpler. And just remember to follow the order of operations, okay? Do anything in parentheses first, then multiply or, or you know, then we do exponents, but we're not doing that yet. We haven't gotten to those yet. But do anything in parentheses and then multiply or divide from left to right and then add or subtract from left to right, right? We did that video too. All right, so we can use a calculator 
to evaluate expressions by substituting the known values for the variables. So this is the calculator you're most likely going to be lent for the GED test and or a similar one. And you can see there's a plus minus sign right here. And you can see there's a little x with a y exponent there. See that? We also have parentheses here. Open and close parentheses. So if we let x equal a negative 2 and y is equal to a 4, and we have this problem, personally, I could do it quicker in my head. But if I wanted to use the calculator, I would have to type in all of this when I could just look at this and put the negative 2 in in my head. See? So don't think a calculator is going to make your life easier. It might make it harder. It might make you take more time on a problem. If you can do this in your head quicker, then do that and move on to the next problem. But if you insist on doing it with the calculator, because this is a negative 2, and remember, we can't use x to mean a variable anymore because it means multiplication on here. The mul this x means a multiplication sign. So that's why we can't use x for multiplication. This means 2 times. All right? We hit this plus slash minus button right here, okay? And what that does is it's going to make the 2 that we're entering into a negative 2. We could also hit 2 plus slash minus. That'll make it a negative 2. Then we hit the plus sign for that plus. Then we hit the 3 for that 3. We hit multiplication because parentheses means multiply. And then we put in the 4 equals. All right? If we have x to the third power plus 5y and x is a negative 2 and y is a 4, I even think this would be easy to do in my head or on paper. But if you insist on doing it with the calculator, because we have x to the third, that means we have negative 2 to the third. So we can put in 2 and then that plus slash minus sign button to make it a negative 2. We hit the x to the y button, and we put in the 3. And these two buttons together, this one and then the number, tells us exponent of 3. See that? You might have to hit a close parentheses. You hit the plus sign for that plus sign, and you're going to have to do f uh, a parentheses again, and 5 multiplication, 4 for this, close parentheses, and equal. See? It might be easier to just go negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 on the calculator, and then add 20. See? It depends on what you think is easier or not. The answer should be 12, all right? You should try practicing this. You have a, if you turn your phone sideways, you'll have a scientific calculator, all right? And try doing this. Now, your phone calculator might be a little bit different than this one, all right? So it's not 100%, all right? So just remember that this plus slash minus sign button changes the sign of the number we just entered or we're about to enter. And this x to the y, this x with a little y exponent, is for the exponent. If we have 2 to the 4th power, you enter the exponent amount after hitting this key. So if we have 2 to the 4th power, you hit 2, then the x to the y button to show that we want to put in an exponent, and then you hit the 4. And then you'll have 2 to the 4th power. All right? You should now be ready to do the skill focus on page 215. And remember, a variable takes the place of an unknown amount, and its value varies in each equation. Our next video is going to be simplifying expressions. We're going to condense and combine terms and simplify expressions. And there's going to be links to this grade 6 videos, Algebra 1, and the previous GED math videos, all right, to make your life easy. So... Boy, don't skip any videos, and if you're having trouble, go to my links, okay? Just remember that when you see these links, to write them down on scratch paper, because you'll kind of get led down a rabbit hole, unfortunately, because you'll stop watching this video and click on, click on those, and then click on another one and click on another one, and you need to get back to this one. So pay attention to where you're at in the playlist, and if you write these all down on scratch paper, then you can watch them and then go to the next one, 
by typing it in in the search bar and then come back to this one, okay? I know it can be confusing because you eventually get farther and farther away from this video, but don't be afraid to do that if you need extra help, okay? Just remember where you are in this playlist. I hope you're having a great day. I'm, I, I really believe in you and I want you to do well. And I'll see you next video. Bye.